Wagner family, and welcome to this week's edition of What's Going On. I'm your host, Pastor Akin Bandele, right here in Houston, Texas. Uh, I welcome all of you tonight to our program. I pray you have had uh, a good week this week. We are going to have some conversation tonight that I know can uh, be of help to uh, all of you. Uh, tonight, uh, I know my topic says for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poorer. So uh, I'm going to ask a question. I know most people know that uh, that saying comes from when people are doing weddings. And uh, it's part of the wedding ceremony where they tell, you know, they ask uh, the husband or the wife to love their wives or love their spouse. And you're going to be with them. You're going to love them. And uh, for richer or for poorer. So that can be misleading in a way because uh, most of you will think I'm talking about, I'm going to be talking about weddings tonight. Let me do this. Uh, I'm going to take the third person that can actually tell me what I may be talking about with that topic, for richer or for poorer. The third person that can give me the correct answer, uh, I will ask for your cash app handle, and I will send you $25, $25. So you can go now. So I'm going to spend the next, uh, maybe the next two, three minutes while people are gathering in. Uh, I'm looking at my live chat right now to see who are commenting. So uh, I want to hear your comment for richer or poorer. When you saw the topic of our, of our discussion tonight, what do you think uh, it means? Uh, I've got one comment, uh, rich in spirit or poor in spirit. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, it's not the answer I'm looking for. That's pretty good, uh, Olufemi. That's pretty good. You can keep trying. Everybody can try for the next uh, two minutes while people are gathering in. Uh, I want you to just guess what my topic is, is about tonight, for richer or poorer. I want you to guess. I started to put the, 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 my main topic on there, but I said, no. People, when they see the, uh, the title, they're going to think, oh, he's talking about a marriage. Uh, I'm not going to listen to that. And they'll be gone. Or they're going to sop through and say, oh, that pastor is talking about uh, 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 doing a wedding or a marriage, and they'll be gone. So I only got one comment tonight. I've got one comment, so let me see. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Hakim 18 says I'm talking about probably heaven or hell. That's a good guess also. Managing finances during this time of economic struggle. That's very close. That's very close. And uh, I believe uh, he's the third uh, person that's commenting. So since, uh, let me see, I got five more seconds. So he's the third one. Okay, Hakeem just jumped in there. Wealth. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to start over. So Hakeem is the first one again. Wealth. Uh, uh, he's uh, for richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. So it's between Hakeem 18 and uh, Olufemi. All right. Well, who is closer? Let me see. Uh, let, 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 let me give you a few more seconds. Come on, come on. We want to hear your comment. For richer, for poorer. When you hear that topic, what comes to mind? For richer, for poorer. Okay, since uh, I only got two of them, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, the $25 is going to actually go to both of them. Since they decide to even comment. So, Hakim 18, you have $25 coming your way. And also, uh, Olufemi, you got $25 coming your way. So, uh, but tonight, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We need, you need to comment and talk to us tonight. Uh, uh, really, what I'll be talking about is uh, knowing that the economy is bad and uh, people sometimes don't know how to manage their finances, like Olufemi said, uh, during this time of uh, struggle. Uh, 
I'm going to be talking about how you can change your thought to actually change your life. We'll talk about ways that uh, rich people think and act that's different than the ways poor people think and act. See, when you talk about success, success is not the result of earning money. Earning money is the result of success. I say it again. Success is not the result of earning money. Earning money is the result of success. You have money because you are successful. You have money because you are successful. So uh, we welcome all of you. Symmetra, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. So rich people actually think different. Uh, they think a certain way. And poor people think a completely different way. And those ways of thinking determine their actions and therefore determine their results. So uh, I'm going to still be taking comments tonight for some of you all. So I may have some more money to give away. So you need to get engaged in the conversation tonight because I want you to be a part of it to actually know what's going on in, uh, in our lives, in our world, what's going on with uh, the economic earthquake that we are going through. And how can you change that struggle uh, by the way you think? Uh, one of the most causes of failure is uh, the habit of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. You see, I said temporary defeat. People quit over temporary defeat. Just because you are defeated does not mean you should quit. If, you, if at first you don't succeed, you need to try again. If you don't succeed, try again. If you don't succeed, try again until you succeed. So just have the mindset that it's not really over. I'm not going to quit until I win. It's not over until I win. So, and, uh, so rich people, their way of thinking is different than poor people. So for you to become successful, for you to uh, have abundance, you've got to think a different way. You can't continue to quit every time you get, I mean, you run into a situation or you get into, a, into a, some kind of trouble. Uh, and all of us, if the truth be told, we are guilty of this mistake at one time or the other. One time or the other, you have decided, you know what, I give up. I'm quitting this job. I, I, I'm quitting, quitting that ministry. I'm leaving this marriage. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm leaving this relationship. Uh, I'm just through. I'm checking out of the world. You know, some people even commit suicide because they quit over temporary defeats. Success comes to those who become success conscious. Success comes to those who become success conscious. Remember, we're all living in the same economy in America right now. As bad as the economy is right now in America, there are people that are still doing very well. There's a reason for that. All of us are living in the same country. We have the same weather. We are facing the same economic earthquake. But our attitudes towards what's going on is different from one person to the other. You have to become success conscious. Failure comes to those who indifferently allow themselves to become failure conscious. So if you are success conscious, then your consciousness and your subconscious will push you towards success. And if your consciousness is always about failure, then you will be pushed towards failure. So tonight, hopefully I have some time to just talk about some of the things that 
you know, the, some of the ways rich people think and act that's different than maybe the way some of you all are thinking and acting when things are happening in your life. So uh, we, 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 we're going to talk about 10 to about 12 different ways that uh, uh, wealthy people, rich people, successful people think that are different than the way poor people think. So we're talking about for richer or for poorer. So if you don't want to be, uh, if you're already poor, you don't want to be poorer, you need to take some notes tonight. Okay, if you are rich and you want to be richer, take some notes tonight. All right, let's go. Number one, rich people always believe this. I create my life. I create my life. And uh, poor people believe life happens. Look at the difference. Rich people say, you know, I create my life. I'm the architect of my own success. And uh, poor people believe, oh, life just happens to me. They fire me on the job. They kick me out of the apartment. My parents kick me out of the house. My husband uh, treated me right. My wife is acting crazy. My children. So you, you're, you're thinking that you, you start thinking as if you are a... Uh, you are a failure. You start thinking as if you are a victim. You have a victim mentality. And that will keep you stuck in poverty. It will keep you stuck in lack. But rich people believe I create my life. If I want to change what I'm getting, I have to create it. You know, some people make things happen. That's what rich people, they make things happen. They make businesses happen. They make a party happen. They, 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 they know how to do, how to make money moves. Okay, they make things happen. And some people watch things happen. So you have people that make things happen. You have other people that watch things that are happening and others don't know what's happening. <laughs> so which category do you find yourself? Are you part of the people that are making things happen? Or are you part of the group that's just watching what's going on in our world and watching things happening? Or are you part of the group that don't even know what's going on? You're just sucking air, just living. So uh, you've you got to put yourself in, the, in one of the ca categories and then try to change if it doesn't really line up with what you want in life. Uh, you know, poor people are always playing the role of victims. They blame other people. They blame their mom. They blame their, their dads. They blame their children. They blame their parents. They blame the mother that, that put them out of the house at an early age. They uh, blame the dad that was not there for them while they were young. They blame the school teacher that was too hard on them. They blame the government. They blame uh, 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 ex-President Trump. They, they, they blame Uncle Biden, President Biden. They blame everybody but themselves. Uh, poor people, they play the role of victims. They, they justify and rationalize their situations. And one thing they do the most is complain. They complain. Rich people don't complain. They make things happen. They create their lives. Amen. Thank you, Sister Dine. I'm making things happen. I know that's right. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to change your thinking. You have to change your mentality. Let me go to our second way. I'm going to give you about 10 to 12 of them tonight so you can write them down. Rich people believe I create my life. Poor people believe life happens. Number two. Number two. Rich people are commit committed to being rich. They have a commitment to being rich. Poor people, though, they just want to be rich. They wish they were rich. They want to be rich, but they are not committed to it. Rich people, they commit to being rich by the way they act. They get up early in the morning. They watch the news. They know what's going on with the economy of the country. They look at what is selling and what is not selling. They look at foreign exchanges. You see, they, they read different news than poor people read. 
they look at different programs than poor people look at. They follow different people on TikTok and Facebook than what poor people follow. <laughs> okay? So, rich people, they are committed. Everything they are doing is about getting to their goal. While poor people, they just want to be rich. They wish. You know, they have, they, they have a wish bone. And if wishes were horses, even beggars would ride. So you can wish to be rich all you want. You can want to be rich all you want. You will not be rich unless you are committed to that goal. You got to set a goal and be committed. So rich people are committed to being rich. And poor people just want to be rich. They want the stimulus check. Instead of creating something that can even give stimulus check. They want a job instead of creating jobs. Oh, you're not going to talk to me tonight. They just want to be rich, but they are not committed to do what it takes to be rich. Uh, if you have questions or comments, I'm going to be going to online uh, to pick up your comments and read them aloud. Uh, amen. God bless you for joining us, allowing us to come in your home. Uh, this week's edition of What's Going On, we are talking about for richer or for poorer. If you are rich right now, you can be richer. And if you are poor right now, you don't want to be poorer, you need to start writing some notes and take notes of what we are talking about tonight. Let me give you number three way. Number three, we're talking about the ways rich people think and act. That's different than the way poor people think and act. Number three, rich People think big. Rich people, they think big. Poor people think, somebody guess, small. Rich people think big. Uh, uh, poor people, they think small. It reminds me of uh, a side hustle that I have trying to teach people how to do investments and stuff. And uh, so many times, when I'm trying to help people, and the first thing they ask me was the minimum. And I tell them the minimum to start is $5. Guess what they want to do? $5. And some of them, I love them too much, I tell them, you are, you are attracting the minimum spirit already. If the minimum is $5, at least do 10 or 15. Don't just go with the minimum. You got to think big. So, and that's the difference. I mean, the same investment when I started, and even though it was $5 minimum, my first investment was about $100. Because I don't believe in this minimum spirit, minimum wage, minimum wealth, uh, you know, uh, minimum shotgun house, minimum uh, 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 car. Um, I just don't believe in, uh, you know, I think big. I think big. Amen. Uh, and I live in a big state. That was one of the reasons I moved to the big state of Texas. Uh, Texas is a big state. So rich people, they think big. Poor people think small. An entrepreneur is a person who solves problems for people at a profit. If you want to become rich, you want to become wealthy, you have to think about problems that you can solve. Think about problems that people have that you can solve. I consider myself a problem solver. I solve computer problems. If your computer is messed up, whether it's your, it's your workstation or your server or your internet, I can solve the problem, but I solve it at a price. I have an hourly charge that, that I charge to solve the problems. I also solve some health problems. That's why I have a water store. Because I know uh, people are thirsty, they are dehydrated. And, uh, and, and that's why most people are sick, because they are not taking care of their health. They're not drinking enough water during the day. They drink soda water. They don't, some of them don't even drink any water. And their brain is drying out. The muscles are drying out. Their eyes are drying out. Everything is drying out in them. So I started a, a, a water company, a water store where I actually, you know, uh, I, I can uh, market uh, alkaline water. And I drink a lot of that water myself for the past several years because I feel like uh, a lot of the disease that we have, if you drink enough water, you can almost kill yourself. 
if you drink enough water every day. I'm actually about to start a regiment uh, where I'm going to try to drink a gallon of water every day. But I'm going to add a little bit of lemon and a little bit of Himalayan salt in it so that I can get my nutrients replenished. But I'm going to start to see if I can get to about a gallon a day. So, uh, so you know, the rich people, they think big. Uh, but poor people always thinking small. They want a small car. They want a small job. They want a small house. They want a small business. They want a small ministry. They are small in their minds. And they attract, you know, things that are small. Uh, I see... Uh, uh, welcome. You are so you are you are you are saying being rich is a mindset. Thank you, Sister Yolanda. Yes, it is a mindset. It is the way we think. Uh, uh, you, uh, you can think and grow rich. There's a book out there by Napoleon Hill that's called Think and Grow Rich. It gives us 13 principles that you can practice in order for you to grow rich. So yes, Sister Yo, it is. Uh, it's a, it, it's a mind consciousness. Being rich is a mindset. You, you, you can sit on your hands all day long watching television and talking about you want to be rich. You are not committed to being rich. So you got to think big. You got to think big. Let me go to number four. Number four, rich people, they focus on opportunities. They focus on opportunities. Poor people focus on obstacles. I say it again. Rich minded people, rich consciousness, uh, wealth consciousness, or su success consciousness, uh, they focus on opportunities. Poor people focus on obstacles. I give you a personal example. Uh, right now, the stock market is going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Guess what I've been doing for the past two months? I'm increasing my, my portfolio. So instead of acting like poor people that jump off, I'm adding little every week to what I have. So by me adding a little bit to it, I'm averaging out my cost over time. So uh, the stock that used to be $30, that's now at $2. Guess what? Everything that goes up comes down, and even though it's coming down right now, eventually it's going to go back up. So what I'm doing now, I'm leveraging. So I'm thinking like rich people think. I'm focusing on opportunities to acquire good companies. AT&T is an excellent company, but guess what? Their stock is still down right now. So guess what I did? I bought some of at and stocks. So I'm, I'm thinking like rich people think. I'm, I, I, I'm focusing on opportunities. Even though the economy is bad, I'm looking at the bad economy, the inflation and all that stuff, and I'm maximizing that. I'm taking that as an opportunity to buy into companies that I would never have been able to afford in January of this year. There are some companies like Facebook and Amazon and, and that I've not been able to afford. But now that their stocks have been dropping and dropping and dropping, I'm able to start chipping in some money into them slowly. Even uh, I have a group of people that, you know, they, they, they are part of the people that I call a who group. Uh, a wealthy, healthy, and overcoming. And I've been advising them, don't, just because the market is on the downturn, you can do two things that rich people would do, you can kind of freeze your, your, your gain to, stop the do, the, to do what they call the stop loss, where you retain your gain and, and uh, put all your investment on hold, okay? Or you can just start adding some more funds to leverage the downturn so that you can participate on the upturn when it happens. And it will happen. It's a matter of time. If the Lord, is, if the Lord you know, spares our life, and uh, if life lasts and death passes, it will come back up. 
Uh, even like the real estate, homes, that's why I'm not buying any real estate right now, unless it's really, really cheap. Because the market is for the sellers right now. You know, they, they are selling a house that's worth 160000 for almost 300000 Well, guess what? In a few years, that bubble is, is going to burst. Sooner or later, it's going to burst. So I'm just waiting on the fringes to find out when it bursts so that I can jump in. So right now what I'm doing is trying to save my funds and save my money and, and, uh, and, and take opportunities on some stocks so that when I ride it up and the uh, real estate market drops, now I can take the money that I rolled up with, with the stocks and bonds and now put it in, in the real estate to start growing with it. So you got to start focusing on opportunities when you see problems. Poor people, though, they think it's an obstacle. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I... you, you've got to, you, you got to change your mindset, like Sister Yolanda said. Uh, uh, Sister Vivian, Sister Vivian said, why do rich people never think that things won't ever fall? And when it does, they don't want to leave. <laughs> well, you got, uh, I won't say rich people, Sister Vivian. I will say greedy people. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold. You got to know when to walk away. And you got to know when to run. You can't count all your money while you're sitting at the table. <laughs> That's a song, by the way. Uh, so you got to know when enough is enough. You can't be greedy. Greed is what causes people to lose their money. I was watching a show today. I believe the show is called uh, uh, Deal or No Deal. And there was a guy that was really doing very well. Doing, I believe, yeah, it, was a, it was a lady. It was a lady doing very well. And there were only three numbers left. Only three amounts left on the board. Now, the banker offered her $687,000. She got three boxes left. Two of them with a million dollars and one of them with $400. So you've got two boxes with one million and another, another box with one million and you got one box with 400. And my wife and I were talking and I said, baby, what will you do? She said, I'll take the 687,000. I said, yeah, you are right about that. I will take it because I knew you got to open one box. And if you open one of the two million dollar boxes, your offer going to go down. But if you open the 400, then you win a million dollars. But my thing is, the bank already offered me 687,000. So my chances, uh, I, even if I have a million dollars in my case, I'm only giving up 300 and something thousand dollars. But what about if I have 400 in my case? Guess what? She went one more time and she opened a million dollar case and the offer dropped down to $470,000. So just because of greed, she lost over $250,000, over $230,000 or so, just because of greed. And then she took the deal. Thank God she took the deal. She, if she played it out, she actually had $400,000 in her case. So, Sister Vivian, you have to know when to fold. You got to know when to take some gains off of the market. And you have to know when to sit on the sideline. But you can't act in fear. You have to look at opportunities. Thank you for your comments, Sister Vivian. Uh, Dene, I've never been comfortable with, uh, with small. I want big money, big house, and I work to get it to. God bless you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Sister uh, Vivian said that's the gambler song. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me go to number five. Number five. Number five tonight. Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. We are talking about ways rich people think and act that are different than the ways the poor people think and act. So we're going to number five. Rich people admire other rich and successful people. Poor people resent rich and successful people. Poor people are haters sometimes. Oh, I don't know why they want all that money. Why do they have to drive all the... Why do they need an airplane? Why do they have to live in a five-bedroom house? It's a ten-bedroom house. Hello? Just because you live in an efficiency doesn't mean everybody wants to live in, an, live in an efficiency. Don't envy the people that are rich. Appreciate them. 
Find one of them as your friend. If they will befriend you, if you not act like a butt when they are with you, if you will respect them, save up some money. Save up, save up about $150 and take them to lunch. Say, I just want to take you to lunch. You know, I don't need nothing from you. Just take you to lunch and get to spend an hour, an hour and a half with you to talk. And just ask them questions. What can you do to better your life? Instead of hating on them. Rich people, they admire other rich people. They admire successful people. But poor people, they resent people that are rich. They resent people that are successful. They think that rich people are arrogant. Successful people are arrogant. They resent them. You've got to admire rich people. See, the anointing that you admire is what you're going to attract. If you're always hating people that have money, you'll never have money. Because the money that they have is going to run away from you because you hate the person that's managing it. So rich people, when they see other wealthy people, they admire them. They admire their clothes. They admire their homes. They admire their family. They admire their, their children. They admire their cars, their businesses. Okay? But poor people, they always complain. And they resent rich people. They hate rich people. They hate successful people. Don't be like that. Find you a rich friend. And get rid of a few of your broke friends. All right? Rich people are, Sister Yolanda said, rich people are usually unhappy and struggle because enough is never enough. Well, Sister Yo, I won't say they are usually unhappy. I will say greedy rich people may be unhappy. Greedy rich people, especially the ones that don't have God in their lives. The ones that feel like everything is for them. Let me tell you the rich people that are happy. One of the richest men in America, I was told the men still drive an old Ford truck, like year 2007. And he's a billionaire. Still drive an old truck. Doesn't have a, a driver to drive him around. He still drives his own, his own, his own truck. Okay, they say this man still lives in a very small conservative house, not a million dollar house. He still lives in about two, three hundred thousand dollar home, and he's a billionaire. Okay, and I just read an article where it's actually uh, all his wealth, he's trying to give it away to help students that want to go to school, he's creating scholarships. He's building homes for the needy. Those are people that I think are happy, rich people because they are not greedy. They know that God gave them wealth to be a blessing to other people. That's the kind of rich people I'm talking about, Sister Yolanda. But the ones that are greedy, the ones that are only wanting for themselves, they never have enough. They will never have enough. They are constantly, constantly, constantly trying to get more and more and more because they never get enough. But Real wealthy people, they don't chase after money. They really don't. If you meet a real wealthy person, they are very, very generous. Very generous in their giving. And they are, many of them are very humble. Very humble. Especially if they have God in their life. If they are believers. Because they know the wealth that God put in their hand is for the benefit of the kingdom of God. And they will help as many as they can. Uh, so, thank you very much, Sister Yolanda. Yes, there may be some rich people that are unhappy. Uh, but uh, uh, you can be rich and be happy, especially when you gain your, your wealth through hard work. You gain your wealth through creating wealth. And you gain your wealth through, through the wisdom of God. And you are using your wealth to better the community, to better our world. That's when you will be happy. When you can drive in the neighborhood and say, you know what? I've got enough money to revitalize the entire neighborhood. And then you mobilize people and get it done. 
People are going to be praying for you. They're going to be loving you. I have a friend that's, that's, that's you know, I consider him very wealthy. And uh, uh, he, uh, I mean, I've known him to just go to a restaurant and when they give him a bill, he will check all the bills to make sure the bill is correct. Okay? Unlike the poor people, they just take the bill, sign the ticket, and, and give it back. He checks his bills. Uh, I've known him to wear the same shoes for, for 10 years and 15 years. But he loves to help people. He loves to be a blessing to people. That what makes him happy, just being a blessing to somebody. Okay, that's the kind of wealthy people I'm talking about. And I'm glad he's my friend because he just blesses people. That's where he gets his uh, fulfillment. Saying God blesses me to lift up somebody else. God has blessed me to help somebody else, to pull them, pull them up and bring them up. And he has done that for so many people. I've seen him, you know, build homes for people that are homeless. I've seen him bought vehicles. I mean, several vehicles for people that had no vehicles. I've seen him just be a blessing to people on a quarterly basis. Say, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars every quarter because I know the economy is tough. Those are the kind of wealthy people I'm talking about where they are not greedy with their money. They are doing good in the community and helping other people. Thank you very much. Amen. Uh, wealthy people shop at Walmart. <laughs> I shop at Walmart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sister Denise. So admire rich people. Bless that which you want. What you want, you need to bless it. That's Huna philosophy. Do you know, and I don't, I'm not saying this for you all to start giving me pastoral love offering when you give offering, especially the members of our church. I was looking at our, our tithing information for three years, and I'm looking at all the saints that say, you know what, we love our pastor. This is a, not a tithe, not an offering, pastoral love offering. And I was looking at it, I could actually count those people on both ends. Out of over 1,500 people that have been through our church, I thought, wow. And if you look at those people also, which I, I check them out, they are the ones that it seems like God is always just favoring their lives. It may not be just about money, it may be about health, about their family, about their job, about their well-being. Amen. So uh, this is a, a human philosophy that says you bless that which you want. And that is the original teachings of the Hawaiian elders. That whatever you want, be a blessing to that. Amen. Be a blessing to that. I was being a blessing to somebody for the past two years just been a blessing to them. Every time they wanted something, I've, I've been a blessing to them. I, I just do what I can without charging for it. But guess what? That same person now has turned around to be a blessing to me in so many ways. In so many ways. And now even has promised to be, to, to, to be even more blessing to my business. This is what I'm saying. You have to bless that which you want, and you will attract that that you are blessing. Let me go to number six. If you are just joining us tonight, this is Pastor Akimandele. We are talking about uh, ways that ways that ways that rich people think and act that's different than the way poor people think and act. Number six, rich people associate with positive. Successful people. Poor people associate with negative or unsuccessful people. Watch your association. Who are you associating with? Who are your friends? Like I always say, who are your fave five? Who are your friends? Your worth is the average of your five friends. Think about it. So if you want to be worth more, you may need to change some of the five friends that you got. Rich people, they associate with positive people. They are positive outlook on life. Successful people. But poor people associate with negative and unsuccessful people. I, I had a, uh, a pear tree in my backyard that had almost 80 fruits on it. 
and I had uh, uh, squirrels. They climbing the tree and eating the fruits, climbing the tree and eating, eating the fruits. My wife said, oh no, they're not gonna eat them all. I said, baby, if I don't do something about this, they're gonna keep eating my fruits. Well, I did all kind of stuff. I pulled uh, pepper out there. I pulled some, some, some things out there that's supposed to repel them. Nothing worked. I even purchased uh, a sprinkler system that will come on when they come by the tree to chase them off. It worked for the big squirrels, with the little squirrels, they bypass it. I tried everything. And then I went out of town for about three days. When I got back, the squirrels ate all my fruits. While I was home, they couldn't eat that fruit because I have a positive outlook that, hey, listen, I'm going to fight till I get rid of them and get some fruits off my tree. But I left for a conference for three days. I came back, they destroyed the remaining 50 or 60 fruits that I had on the tree. They were all gone. And that's just the way life is. So I was very positive that, hey, I'm going to get some fruits. But because I was absent for three days, and then even though they ate all my fruits, I still didn't stop because I still see them in the yard. And now I got a device that when they come around, the device starts screaming. Loud noise that they can hear and I can hear it. It starts screaming and making noises and making noises like, you know, like a snake, rather right? snake. And so it's, I, I noticed that three of them was coming towards the tree. That thing came on and they took off running. And I noticed now for the past two weeks, they have stayed away from that particular tree because of that thing that, that, that I found to create. I was actually thinking about creating a robot dog at first. I was talking to uh, Bex, my daughter, to help me, to help me create uh, my brother Daniel, Dick and Daniel. We're going to create a robot dog that we will leave. I will leave it out there and anything, anytime something moves, the dog will start barking and start moving. It will chase them away. But uh, uh, we didn't get to do that, so, but this device is working fine, so we're just going to go with that. So you got to associate with positive people and successful people. Let me go to number seven. Number seven, rich people are bigger than their problems. Poor people are smaller than their problems. Rich people are bigger than their problems. Poor people are smaller than their problems. Rich people will say, that's the problem, I'm going to solve it. Poor people go, oh, woe is me, sky is falling, the house is falling, the dog is dead, the goldfish is, is dead, and the roaches are taking over the house. Poor people, it's woe is me, woe is me. Rich people, amen, they, 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 they know that they are bigger than their problems, and they have faith that they can solve whatever problem comes to them. But poor people, they become small. They, they, they will tell you we are like grasshoppers. Remember the giants in the Bible? When, uh, when, uh, you remember when uh, um, uh, Moses sent, uh, sent uh, uh, the spies to go, to go scope out the land, the, the promised land, and 12 people were sent out. 10 of them came back with bad reports. Ten said, man, when we got in the land, the grapes were big. It took two of us to carry a branch of grapes. But there were giants in the land. And we are like grasshoppers in front of them. You see, poor people have a grasshopper mentality. They have a grasshopper mentality. But Joshua and Caleb came back and said, uh-uh. Yeah, there are giants in the land. The milk, I mean, the land is flowing with milk and honey. Hey, we know somebody had the cows that making the milk, and we know somebody owned the beehive, but guess what? We're going to take the promised land. That's the way rich people think. Rich people think like Caleb and Joshua. Poor people think like those 10 spies that came back to Moses and said, we are like grasshoppers in front of them. We cannot take that city. So get out of your grasshopper mentality. Okay, let me go to number eight. Number eight, we have a few more. Number eight. Uh, number eight, rich people choose to get paid based on results. You got to catch this one right here, this point right here. Rich people, they choose to get paid based on results. 
poor people choose to get paid based on time. Let me explain that. Poor people trade time for money. Rich people want to get paid based on results. I'll give you an example. Uh, somebody found me online and they called my computer company. They had a particular device that was not working. Uh, uh, the device, brand new, is about $1,800. To get it replaced under warranty was about $1,000. And this person called me. And I told them, okay, pay $165 and I'll diagnose it for you. If I fix it, I applied the fifty percent of your of your diagnosis fee to repairing it. So they brought the equipment to me, and I checked it out. I did research. I did everything. I called the company that made it. I found out, yeah, I can get it replaced for a thousand dollars. I thought, wow. So I started doing research. I'm an electronics engineer. I'm a computer engineer. So I started doing more research, more research, more research, and I ran into somebody in California that had the same problem who is actually also an electronics engineer. And the guy traced the problem down to a 14 cents capacity, I mean a 14 cents resistor. 14 cents resistor. And he showed pictures of what to do. So I downloaded the pictures and I ordered the, uh, the resistors. But I couldn't order one, I had to order a hundred. <laughs> there was a hundred of that same resistor in the packet. I think I paid like maybe $3 and I bought it. When they got here, I opened the device, I followed the instructions, I got my, I've not soldered in a long time. I pull out my soldering gun, soldered the, uh, the resistor to the point that the guy says solder it to, assembled the equipment and the equipment came up running. So not only did I charge the 165 diagnosis fee, I also charged the guy another $200 for me fixing it. And my cost to fix it is just my time and 14 cents or maybe $3 pack of resistors. So I got paid based on result. I got paid based on result. What was the result? He got his equipment back in a working condition without paying $1,000. So I got paid based on results. And I do that a lot. Uh, I don't, you know, I could go out to get a job to trade time for money, but you only got so many hours in a day. If you want to really be wealthy, you got to find a way to create wealth. You got to find a way to create businesses. You got to become an entrepreneur like Sister Denae. I mean, Sister Denae, I, I know she's doing a couple of businesses right now. I mean, I, so... You've got to, you know, Brother Josh, you know, he's doing, you know, one or two businesses also. You, you, you've got to learn to create passive income. Not trading time for money all the time. You create passive income. That's another story in itself. So, uh, but, but we'll, we'll, well, we'll talk about that another time. But just for that point, uh, rich people... They, 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 they get paid based on results. Poor people choose to get paid based on time. Uh, is profit versus wages. Poor people think about wages. How much do I, am I going to make an hour? Rich people think about profit. Profit. There's nothing wrong with getting a steady paycheck. Don't get me wrong tonight. There's nothing wrong with getting a steady paycheck. Unless... It interferes with your ability to earn what you are worth. I say it again. There's nothing wrong with getting a steady paycheck. I thank God for a steady paycheck. Unless if that steady paycheck interferes with your ability to earn what you are worth. Let me tell you what I'm saying. You have a bachelor's degree. You work in a Burger King for $10 an hour. That is getting in the way and it's interfering with your ability to earn what you are worth. So you need to do that job knowing that you're not going to be there long. Maybe three months or four months. Just to have some income coming in until you can create your own life. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? So there's nothing wrong with wages. As long as you, it doesn't interfere with your ability to earn what you are worth. Uh, 
And uh, Sister Dine, I hear you there. I'm about to talk about that as also. One stream of income is too close to broke. <laughs> you ought to give that so you ought to you got I give that a thumbs up. I like that. One stream of income is too close to being broke. You are only one or two paychecks away from being broke. Because if they ever cut your check, one pay period, you're in the broke house. Because you only have one stream of income. I believe in creating streams of income. I have a minimum, minimum of four streams of income. I think about uh, the north, the south, the west, and the east, the four corners. So I'm always thinking about, even when you look in the Garden of Eden, there are four streams that was flowing in the Garden of Eden to make the garden really plentiful. So let me say this to all of you. You need a minimum, everybody say minimum of four, one, two, three, four streams of income. I didn't say four jobs. Four streams of income. Uh, if you're in Houston and you are part of New Covenant, you're going to learn how to create those streams in our group, the whole group. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, getting ready to give them some information after our exercise in a couple of weeks, things that they need to do to try to create additional stream of income. Uh, we're not talking about getting jobs. We're not talking about get, getting another job or, or trading time for money. That's poor people. That's what poor people do. Rich and wealthy people, they think about how can they, how can they create generational wealth. And we're going to be talking about that in some of those meetings. But just understand that... Uh, uh, rich people, they, uh, they choose to get paid based on results. Uh, uh, poor people choose to get paid based on the time that they put in. There is profit versus wages. Let me go to number 10. My time is almost up. Number 10. Number 10. Rich people, is that number 10 or number 9? Ah, it's number 9. Number 9. Let me go to number 9. Rich people focus on their net worth. Rich people, they focus on their net worth. Poor people focus on their working income. I say it again. Rich people, they focus on their net worth. Poor people focus on their working income. Rich people work on their dream. They work on their profit. Poor people work on their wages. They want a 20 cents raise. That's a poverty mentality. They want a few, I've not gotten a raise in two years. Oh, my boss gave me a raise, 39 cents. It's a poverty mentality. Rich people, they, they dream about profit. I cannot profit with my car. I cannot profit with my mind. I cannot profit. Amen. Uh, you know, you serving the Lord. Can, God can give you a witty invention. You can think about something to invent. A book to write. A song to write. A song to sing. Uh, create a business. A problem you can solve. Rich people always focus on their net worth. You see, I'm not always, uh, the way I think, you know, I, I really think different. The people, uh, somebody asked me, uh, they were talking to me and they said, Pastor, you are, you are an empty nester. You know, what you do with all these bedrooms in your house now? I said, hey, they don't bother me. The extra bedrooms don't bother me as long as it's been maintained. And my house is increasing in value. It's about net worth. Net worth. What will my current home be worth in five years from now? My rental property. In three years. Has appreciated over $120,000. In three years. That's what's called net worth. It's not about you buying a brand new iPhone. Rich people don't go out to buy a new iPhone every time a new one comes out. They don't go out to buy a new car every time, you know, a new car comes out. Now, don't get me wrong. Rich people, they, they, they drive nice. They buy nice things. They deserve it as long as they are also helping other people. And many of them are. You know, I know, maybe, well, no, no. I know a lot of wealthy people that are helping people. They give cars away. 
They give homes away. I know at least four that give stuff away all the time. And you probably know some of them too. But you don't like them because they give, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. You know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you don't like her though. But hey, there's nothing you can do about it. She worked hard. She's the best at her craft. She created her own life. And she's helping people as much as she can. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't envy her. I admire her. I admire her. I like her success. Especially, you know, you know, she's uh, she 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 looks like me. She looks like me. So I, I'm happy. Hallelujah. Don't don't hate. Don't hate. Okay? Rich people focus on their net worth. Number 10. Number 10. Rich people manage their money well. Rich people manage their money well. Poor people mismanage their money. Rich people manage their money well. Poor people mismanage their money. Poor people have the latest game. Poor people have the latest tennis shoes. Poor people have the fanciest phone. The nicest fingertips. Yeah, that's poor people. They got the best wig money can buy. That's poor people. But rich people, uh, they manage their money well. They allow their money to make money for them. They put their money to work for them. So if you want to be rich, you got to put your money to work. And you got to start from where you are. You can start with just saving $10 every week or $10 a month. I was talking to a few people this past week. Say, well, I don't understand investment. You don't need to understand it. Just follow the guidelines that I'm teaching you. Systematically put $5 away every week or $10 every week. Week in, week out. Week in, week out. I mean, that's, that's a burger, by the way. Just a burger and fries. You, you can afford to miss a meal a week. Just miss that burger and fries this week and put that, that $10 away and watch it grow and grow and grow. So rich people manage their money. Poor people, uh, they, uh, they, they mismanage their money. Number 11, number 11. I'm going to come to my uh, comments uh, Lady Betty, I'm coming to take. I'm coming to take your uh, comment in a minute. Rich people, number uh, eleven. Rich people have their money work hard for them. I think I mentioned that. Poor people work hard for their money. Rich people, uh, they have their money to work hard for them. See what I'm doing right now? I'm pulling money from here and here. And I'm putting in, in a, I've got an investment that I found about three years ago. They invest in high-rise buildings and apartments in uh, Florida and in California. And, uh, you know, I started with just $1,000 and I keep adding to it. I add to it. I'm adding to it. And no, lo and behold, I'm getting an email. Oh, Mr. Bandelli, your portfolio, we're about to buy nine different apartment complex. And every quarter, I'm getting dividends on my money. I keep adding to it. So I'm about to send them some more money from, I'm going to pull it out from the, from the uh, investment that's not working and put it on what is working. You understand what I'm saying? So you make your money work hard for you. But poor people, they work hard for their money. Last but not the least, number 12. Drum roll, my time is up. Rich people act in, in uh, they act. In spite of fear, rich people take action in spite of fear. Poor people, they let fear stop them from doing anything. Rich people, they act. They may be afraid, they may be fearful, but they go for it. But poor people, they allow fear to stop them. Action, somebody says, is the bridge between the inner world and the outer world. I say it again. Action is the bridge between the inner world and the outer world. 
Amen. That's where I'm going to end uh, our conversation tonight. I'm going to take uh, the comment, the, my last comment. Why will a person remain poor when God has given men the power to gain wealth? That's an awesome question, uh, Sister Betty. Lady Betty, that's an awesome question. Uh, people remain poor because they don't take actions. God has given us the power to get wealth. He doesn't give us wealth. He gives us power to create it. He, give us, he gives us power to get it. So, uh, people don't get the wealth because they don't make decisions. They refuse to make the right decisions. They refuse to be committed to using the power that God has given them to gain the wealth. They are blaming people while they are not wealthy. They are blaming people for being sick. They are blaming everybody but themselves. Uh, it's a poverty mentality. Even though God has given them the power to get it, and they may even have the Holy Ghost. But having the Holy Ghost and praying and all that, not going to bring you success. You got to take action. You got to do something. You've got to take action. Prayer and faith is good. But it pushes you to take action, to do something. Whatsoever you do is what's going to prosper. If you're not doing anything, nothing is going to prosper. So Lady Betty, that's a very, very good question. Thank you very much for that question and that comment. Well, I don't see any more questions tonight. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my first two people that won $25 each. Uh, make sure you, uh, actually, those two people, can you put your Cash App handle on the comment right now, and we will send you $25 each. Go ahead and put your Cash App handle, because I don't know, once we are off the air, I may not be able to get your Cash App handle, unless you reach out to me on uh, Facebook, inbox me on Facebook with your Cash App handle. So the two people that uh, I believe is Hawk. Aquim 18. And uh, okay, I know the second person, Ulufemi. So, Hakim 18, uh, make sure you put your Cash App handle. Actually, why don't you put it on the comment right now? Both of you are putting it on the comment right now. Who knows? Somebody may be a blessing to you. <laughs> that just came in my spirit right now. You're moving slow, you're moving slow, you're moving slow. I'm about to go off the air. You are moving slow, put your Cash App handle. There we go, there we go, dollar sign, key, H-T-A. Hey, listen, if you're watching, you want to be a blessing to them also, send them something. Don't hate, because they won $25 tonight. Don't hate. Say, man, maybe I should have gotten on earlier myself. Maybe I should have answered the question. Hey, send that, hey, I got another one. Okay, both of them just send their cash out. Send them $5, send them $10. Say, hey, listen, bro, congratulations, you won that $25. And see what God will do for you. Family, I love you all. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, hey, uh, this is your truly pastor, Akin Bandele. Thank you for allowing us to come in your home until next week. This same channel, YouTube, same time, 7.30 Central Standard Time. We'll see you again in Jesus' name. If life lasts and death passes, we'll be back on this channel in Jesus' name. Good night, family. I love you. Jesus loves you more.